All right, so this will be a relatively quick video on how I uh, process uh, GPS data through magnet tools. So I'll fire up my magnet tools over here. Uh, this is really a very simple process, a very simple uh, project I'm working on. So we'll go create a new job over here, give it a name. I have a folder for it already, so let's see. It's a training video folder. There we go. And we'll call this training video. Now, um, what is useful is if you have pre-existing uh, configurations, you can actually pick them from over here. I happen to have one that's called NAT 83 Maryland in US feet, but for the sake of the video, I'll just keep it in the default uh, settings over here. So we'll say create and this will create a blank canvas for me to actually import the static data that I have from GPS receivers so I will go ahead and hit the little import button and under import uh, it already takes me to uh, the folder that I know I have my data in it's a TPS file and I have three TPS files top composition system static files so I'll actually kind of draw a little box around them and I'll hit open and because I didn't specify what type of files they are the program recognizes them and it says hey do you want to import a point and the occupation with it and unless I know better uh, I can uncheck and check stuff but this is actually what I want so yes and it'll ask me three times one two and three because three files were imported if you had common time between the um, static files, you will see lines. If you didn't have common time, meaning they were off at individual times and not overlapping, you will not see lines. So that's a problem because you might have received or imported data that has nothing to do with the time frame between uh, your actual receivers. So first off, um, we have uh, three points that were imported in latitude, in longitude, in ellipsoid height, and in the wrong unit. So in order to fix uh, everything, what we need to do is we actually need to go into either the job configuration and uh, configure our job over here, or uh, we can mess with these uh, status indicators over here. These are actual icons that you can click. So if I know that I need to be in state plane coordinates over here, what I can do is I can go into my datum over here, click it, and rather than pick my datum with latitude, longitude, or XYZ coordinates, I'll hit ground. When I hit ground, everybody freaks out because they see, oh, my coordinates are now gone. I don't have my coordinates. Well, that's just because you don't have a datum specified. So I'll go into none. You can click this, another uh, drop down menu appears and I am in the United States and I want to be in the state plane 83 coordinate system so that's your N8083 and I am in Maryland so I'm going to find Maryland Maryland is easy because there's only one but I'll pick Maryland and suddenly luckily I have my northing and easting my elevations show up over here um, another thing that's uh, uh, frequently uh, uh, a question that uh, new uh, users find is uh, my elevations are definitely wrong and in my case I know they are wrong because these are ellipsoid heights you can see that the ellipsoid height is the same as the elevation and this should be your ground elevation and this ellipsoid height should be the ellipsoid height so that is a different height and they shouldn't match if you have a geoid loaded so I need to verify that my geoid is loaded over here so unfortunately the geoid doesn't exist down in this uh, uh, status bar at the bottom right you have to go into geo job configuration over here and under the job configuration you go into your coordinate system and in the coordinate system this is exactly the same stuff we just set at the bottom right corner over here so we selected maryland again from your state we um, selected uh, grid for our coordinates but you see that the geoid is blank I happen to know that the geoid that I need to be in is the 2018 U8 grid so when I click this and you hit the OK button notice the elevation will actually change because it applies the geoid separation now 
there's one more thing that I want to adjust is definitely I'm in US survey feet so I don't need this to actually say meters so let me go meters and change this to US feet and again click anywhere in the view and you see now they finally look like cordons that I'm familiar with seeing again notice ellipsoid height is the GPS height elevation is the ground height on these things so uh, we are ready to kind of adjust our control points to what we actually want them to be so you go into the GNSS occupations tab over here this shows you the duration of your your, your actual uh, data and because I'm in UTC for example you see that apparently I started the job or started the data collection at midnight or well an hour before midnight which I know is definitely incorrect so you can go into your job configuration and you can actually adjust your time over here so if I go into display you go into time you can change this to what you know it is in my case it's a uh, negative five and we are in daylight savings hit OK now it's a little bit more realistic it's 9 or 7 p.m. Um, our time over here I have three points that's correct um, it's an hour one hour duration because these were automated files but again it, it serves the same purpose as if they were started in the field and stopped in the field so it's the same thing I need to pre-populate my antenna types and my antenna heights and for that I need to use um, my notes or look at my notes so I happen to have notes uh, that I have in a text format or PDF or whatever you have a piece of paper that tells you so I know my uh, DTGT point was at 6.56 uh, height and it was vertical height so let me go ahead and uh, now this is where you need to know which uh, designator or your file name is what point so I happen to know that the DG DTGT uh, point is I'll just I'll just rename it DTGT so that it's a little bit clearer I know OCCC once again if I look at my notes is just OCCC and SBYU but once again I'll just uh, carry on with this so I have an antenna type uh, these were all different receivers so if I click the little drop down over here I'll go into TopCon and I happen to know that this is a G5A1 antenna type everybody's antenna type will be different so this is very specific to the equipment that you're using but my height was 6.56 and it was a vertical height uh, there's an option for vertical and slant so if I consult my little notes it says DTDG that's correct I have the antenna type I don't have that specified here but that's the type of antenna that we're, we were using and the height is 6.56 feet and it's vertical height good carry on to Ocean City so OCCC we'll just rename this like this uh, antenna type was a different antenna and I'm clicking very slowly you can see that uh, even my program actually takes a little time to uh, respond it was a CRG5 antenna and the height happens to be 4.89 so let's call this 4.89 and in this case it was a slant height so we'll hit slant and the last one is uh, a point in Salisbury Maryland that's why it's called SBYU actually near the university SBYU and this happens to be a G5A1 also so we'll call it G5A1 and the antenna height was 6.56 these are two meter heights 6.56 if you're uh, wondering um, but now if I look at my notes I have the right heights I know they're in slightly different order just because how the uh, actual notes were put in but DTGT is at 656 and it's vertical height that's correct SPYU is at 656 vertical height and Ocean City is at 4.89 slant height so this is correct I don't need uh, these notes anymore let me hit the save button just so that I don't have to recreate if anything happens to the uh, program here so now my project is saved if I want to I can actually view my data in this view with a map a background here so if I click the map background you'll see that when I zoom out a little bit this is a relatively big project so 
you can see that there's there's a, if I zoom out of the actual uh, what is it map at there the, and, and uh, unfortunately the text is ugly too or in this case black so it's hard to see but there's my Salisbury point there's an Ocean City point and then there's a Georgetown that's why this is called GT over here but uh, occasionally I don't like the map hence I'll turn it off but this is I'm now ready to actually process my data so in order to process this data I can go back into I need to go back into the points tab and under the points tab I should have at least one of those points of the three that we are trying to actually process or run processing on I need to know values on it and I happen to know the true values on what they should be so I can see that for the SBYU point the average position is off by about three feet so I gotta adjust it so I either type it in if you have it on a piece of paper or just I'll copy this out of here so we'll copy it out and we'll replace this value with the value that we copied out so that's now to uh, 50,199.425 we'll do the same thing with easting we'll copy this out this just prevents you making you know uh, error while typing so we'll type this in here by just pasting it in here and my elevation and this is the true elevation this is the ground elevation considering the height that we input in there is 90.695 so we'll copy this out and once again we'll just paste it in here and you you can as well just start typing um, obviously I don't need these characters but you can type in whatever values you want in here as long as they kind of make sense and now now that uh, we verify and this is good good check over here I need to make sure that these values are the values that are in the northings easting and elevation uh, fields of the job they are so I'm happy with this I can close my notes or just minimize the notes and uh, because these were northing, easting, and elevation known values, what I'll do is in the control tab or the control column, um, it's not just horizontal, not just vertical control, but it's both horizontal and vertical control. So you'll see that the little icon on the map actually changes to a triangle. Done. Meaning, uh, once again, I'll just hit save so that I don't have to recreate this if I needed to. Uh, and now I can go ahead and actually hit the process button what processing allows you to do is it will process the vectors between the uh, receivers as long as there's enough time between them the software should tell you that it processed them successfully and they should turn green if they meet your processing requirements which are by the way set in your processing configuration button over here so I mean uh, anytime you have problems with it uh, your processing and GPS post processing uh, these are the settings that have some impact on your accuracy over here but uh, now we're processed so we know we had enough time we have an accuracy of uh, we can click the GNSS observations over here and uh, you can see statistic uh, values on your northings your eastings and your uh, differences between different uh, you know control points over here so four hundredths of a foot nine hundredths of a foot not great but I mean also not horrible at this point so these were relatively long baseline so we're talking maybe 20 30 miles so uh, the accuracy is not going to be as tight as uh, on smaller projects but uh, at this point I am uh, happy with my actual processing the last thing that you kind of want to do is you uh, do a least square adjustment over here um, click the OK button hit OK and what happens it pushes all of the uh, inaccuracy or the processing of a vector down to the actual points themselves so now you see that the icons are different now my northings and my eastings that I see in my little table view over here are um, relevant to the actual points meaning I can uh, export I will save this again and if I want to export this uh, in a format to uh, you know import into a different program all you have to do is job export and then say hey I want to export just my points over here my process points next typically I like to process uh, export into just a good old-fashioned um, point file so that's under coordinates and txt file is what I like and th there's many of them so uh, you can easily get lost in the selection but I'll go into text file and I'll say processed 
static files and I'll put them into the same folder where I actually have the project so we'll go data jobs and we'll go into training video and I'll just hit save over here and what happens here if I now look at the file that we just exported here uh, double click it this is what I just exported so these are the actual resulting coordinates from my processing uh, which I can either use in CAD or take it into a field controller now and run my uh, localization or something like that so this is it there's uh, definitely more things that you can actually report through the report tab over here but for the sake of the video this is your processing finished I will hit save for the last time actually I already did because apparently uh, it's not even available and I am done with my processing so I hope you found this video useful if you have any questions or comments leave them below